in Rn, giving the smallest value for what is inside, inside here, given for the R minimum. So if, it, if it's just min, uh, it would give a real number, the smallest value of that function. But argument means it gives the point where the function is at its smallest. So in even of regularization, we actually This is what we do. Uh, there is a so-called regularization parameter alpha. And the, the thinking behind this is that this part uh, deals with the measurement information. For some f we try here, the A matrix will take virtual measurements of f and compare them uh, to the actual, we could even have here the, the actual measurements. So this is kind of taking care that whatever f we are looking at, it should give us, it should give measurements close to the ones given by the device. But as we saw, there can be infinitely many of these f points that give a small number for this one. So we have another penalty. So this is kind of a penalty. This is the first penalty coming from, if this penalizes for giving the wrong measurements. If f gives the wrong measurements, it gets penalty from this guy. But it's not enough to really specify the best f for ill host problems. Tikhonov introduced this idea that we have another penalty here, just penalizing for the size of f. So a little bit like the discussion we had before today, why the minimum norm solution. This has kind of the same philosophy behind it. Uh, let's, let's try to look for a small energy f somehow. So kind of a, let, let's put a penalty for the size of f. And this alpha number here gives a balance between the two penalties. How much do we put weight on the a priori information? So this is like I said, in inverse problems we are combining measurement information and a priori information. So here they are neatly in two different terms, giving penalty. And we have a plus here, and now we are looking for the smallest possible penalty uh, with some weighting or trade-off described by this number alpha. Uh, and then we look for the f that kind of the combined penalty is the smallest. And then the question was what is generalized deep of regularization? It just means that we have here some matrix. For example, this can be some finite difference matrix. So then instead of uh, requiring that f is small, we are requiring that the derivative of f is small in a discrete sense, finite difference sense. So, are we going to L by n matrix? L, uh, usually, in many times it's an n by n matrix, but actually it can be some kind of L by n matrix. The number of penalties can be smaller or larger than the elements of F. And actually, in the next exercises, I will I will uh, treat you with, with uh, some, some choices of the difference matrix there with, with a couple of different sizes. So, uh, with the computation we did today, with, with a little bit more complication, taking also this one uh, in the computation, it's possible to derive a nice formula uh, for F alpha, which goes like this. No, oh, I so hope this is this goes correct. Let me try. Let, let's see what happens. So with the similar computation it can be shown that uh, we can compute F alpha in this way, and uh, if this L is chosen uh, in a nice way, then this matrix really will be invertible. For example, if L is the identity matrix n by n, then this is always invertible. You will have the pleasure of, of proving that in the exercises. So then we can just use this, and if L uh, if L is chosen in such a way that, that this thing is invertible, then we can use this formula 
for computing it. And, and sometimes we can we can do it in a matrix-free fashion uh, using an iterative solver of, of matrix equations. That's something we will look at later in the course. Yeah, I see a lot of trouble ahead. It's a large. Yes. I mean, yes. there are multiplications and even inversions. Yes. So if the matrices are large here, we can actually, so since we are running out of time anyway, so let me just point out that, uh, so here actually, I could, I could write it actually in this, in the form of an, of an equation. So we would have here, Alpha plus alpha times LT del. This regularized solution uh, is a solution of this matrix equation. Uh, and the trick there, if the matrices here are really big, then one can use iterative solvers Uh, they often call like Krulov space methods, where the idea is, is, is if we have a, let's, let me, like if we have a matrix equation, um, uh, if you have a matrix equation like this, uh, how to solve it? Krulov space methods they actually work like. Uh, Constructing, constructing a space, uh, first put the right hand side, then, uh, then take the, the uh, space spanned by these two vectors, then some more, uh, sorry, square, and so on, until And here the point is that we don't necessarily need to construct this matrix B. It's enough if we have a, an M file, let's say, in MATLAB, or in, if we have an algorithm that gives us, uh, for a given vector, some algorithm computes, and so for a given vector Y, we have an algorithm that gives us what is the vector B, Y. Like for example, using the Radon command in MATLAB without a matrix, it will compute the sinogram. Uh, given, given an image, it will compute a sinogram, and it doesn't need to construct any matrix. So, uh, if we just have such a uh, software computing the effect of, of, of matrix multiplication for any arbitrary vector, then we can just work with this Krulov subspace. For example. GMS generalized minimal residual method, for example. So you just give it the algorithm computing uh, by for any given y, and you give it y, and then it will run. It's in MATLAB, for example, it's already available. Um, there are actually many, many such methods available. So then uh, you can find an approximate solution x uh, by never constructing the matrix just using this kind of iterative method. So this is somehow the goal in the course, one of the goals of this course to uh, see how ill post problems can be solved and also see how they can be solved in really large scale when maybe we don't even want to construct the matrix. So then we just apply an iterative solution method to, to this equation. Gradients. Yeah, conjugate gradients is, is for example, well, well, that's something we will use for, for this equation. We will apply the conjugate gradient method. Because that's about the gradient. Yeah. That's true. So we just need we just need a computer code for for A and A transpose and L and L transpose, and then we are good to go. We will be doing something like that later. Yes, well, well this lecture wasn't, wasn't completely what I planned it to be, but it's a lecture nevertheless. So,
Thanks for coming and have a good weekend. And next Wednesday, uh, let's point